This is a really cheap guitar and it was my main guitar for quite a long time. I used it on several albums and played all my concerts with it for a few years. That is what this video is about. It's also about how you can find very solid instruments for very little money and with a few modifications make them sound and play fantastic. Something that is a good option for a first jazz guitar. And later in the video I'm going to talk a little bit about guitar prices and quality in general. Whoa, this case is dusty. <laughs> Mostly you guys see me playing semi-holo guitars in my videos, and that is also what I play 99% of the time, my Ibanez or my Gibson. But when I started at the conservatory, I was actually playing a Strat, which I'd strung up with uh, flat wound 13s, not the most obvious of combinations. And later that year, I bought the ES-175 that you've probably also seen in some of my videos. The story about the Gibson ES-175 is actually a bit strange. A friend of mine came across it in a shop in The Hague he couldn't afford it, so he told me about it, and I tried it out and went directly to the bank and took it home. I played that ES-175 for my entire education and the first years after I graduated. An odd side story here is that a few years ago I actually found out that it had been stolen 10 to 15 years before I bought it, but maybe that's for another video. After I graduated from the Royal Conservatory, I was listening to a lot of musicians that had a different sound from the more traditional sound that I was getting from the ES-175. So players like Kurt Rosenwinkel and Ben Monder. After a lot of experimentation with delays and reverbs, delays and reverbs I realized that I couldn't really get the ES-175 to do that type of singing, sustained, mid-focus tone, which is really the semi-hollow thing for me. So I needed to find another guitar and I needed to figure out what it was that I wanted. When it comes to investing in gear, then I'm actually very cautious, even if I do have some expensive stuff like Fractal Audio gear or the vintage Gibson guitars. I don't usually just go out and buy an instrument on impulse. At the time, I didn't feel comfortable just getting an expensive semi-holo since I wasn't 100% sure that it could give me the sound that I wanted or that it played like I wanted it to. In part also because I was aware that I wasn't 100% sure what I wanted. I started checking out what was out there, different models, new and vintage, looking across Ibanez, Yamaha, Heritage, Epiphone and Gibson. I realized that the Epiphone Sheraton was a fairly cheap model, so that was quickly the type that I focused on. But while I was checking that out, I also tried some other types and brands. Among other things, I remember a Schofield Signature Ibanez that I tried in a shop, but it was set up so badly and the strings were probably older than Schofield, so I didn't investigate those any further. Instead, I focused on the Sheraton, mainly because I'd seen Kurt Rosenwinkel play one live at the North Sea Jazz Festival a few years earlier. And I really like his tone and especially being able to get more sustained so that I could play chords under a note and keep everything ringing, really make it sing a lot more. Since I didn't want to spend too much money and I'd read about the Korean Sheratons being better than the Indonesian built version, I started searching for secondhand Sheraton models and asking for serial numbers to figure out when or where they were made. I ended up searching for half a year and trying around 20 of them in shops and for sale privately before I found one that I liked in the spring of 2008. For me, this was always important. I've only once bought a guitar that I did not first play and I find that difficult to do. Ordering a guitar in a shop like Toman or Andertons and never trying it before you buy it seems pretty scary to me. Though I guess that's also what you do when you order one from a builder. But then there are other differences as well, of course. I'll talk a little bit about that later in the video with discussing the prices of different guitars. When it comes to choosing a guitar, then there's almost a part of it that is about how that specific guitar fits you. It has to have the right vibe and resonate with you. And this one did. I somehow always had that with the guitars that I ended up buying. The one chooses the wizard, Mr. Potter. It's not always clear why. And I've let quite a few guitars go on that account as well. This guitar plays extremely well and I also had it set up by Angelo from Panucci Guitars and he certainly adds his own magic since he's an amazing builder and tech. I loved how it played and I immediately started to use it as my main guitar and did all my gigs on it. It was almost what I wanted it to be. I just needed to fix a few things and I also really needed to realize that they needed fixing. So about this guitar, it is a 2000 Korean built Epiphone Sheraton. It is pretty heavy, mainly because it's built largely from mahogany. So if you have back problems, then this is not a guitar for you. These guitars also have a very thick finish, which maybe is a part of why they sound quite dark. Uh, and the neck is pretty thin and also fairly wide, but that also means that it can be set up to play very easily, very fast with low action. I had put uh, 13s on it and had it set up and it played 
fantastic. It still does, actually. What I did realize quite fast was that the guitar needed new pickups. The stock pickups in this instrument were anything but fantastic. They lacked definition, especially in the lower frequency range, and easily sounded undefined and muddy. Now that I had a great playing instrument, I was more willing to invest in upgrading the pickups, but I was still careful because I had absolutely no idea about different brands or any real experience with humbuggers. So I read a lot of stuff on the internet about pickups. That meant almost nothing to me. And then I set out to find some secondhand pickups. I originally wanted to get some Seymour Duncan Seth Lovers, which is actually also what happens to be in the neck on my Ibanez. And they are really solid pickups. I'd also read about more boutique brands like Lollar and Bare Knuckle, but they were more expensive than the guitar and it didn't really make sense to buy pickups that were more expensive than the instrument itself. That's another thing that I think is vastly underrated. Buying secondhand gear, you get so much more for the money and a warranty on a guitar means very little. If it's crap or if the wood did not rest enough and goes bad, then you're anyway screwed. Though that is of course really something for very cheap guitars. While I was hunting for secondhand pickups, I came across some bare knuckle the mule pickups and thinking that what the hell, I'm just going to make a really low bid. To my surprise, I actually got them. Now with these pickups, I went to Panucci Guitars and asked Angelo to change all the electronics and the pickups in the guitar. This made the guitar sound 10 times as good. Everything became so much clearer and it retained that singing sustain quality. Essentially, it was the guitar that you hear now and that you heard at the beginning of the video. The guitar went with me to work, quite a lot of studio stuff in this period, and I was also on a short tour in Africa where I also had to fly back and without any sleep go directly into the studio to record an album. Don't ever do that. Somewhere in that incredibly long session, there was a take at the end of the day, so after 10 hours of recording where I literally fell asleep in the middle of the take. I also used the Epiphone on the second Trappen album, Push, which features Top Dog, the song that we were playing on TV at the beginning of this video. And in that recording session, I did not fall asleep once. At that time, I'd switched to using the Fractal Audio Axe FX for pretty much everything, but there's also another very old video on my channel where I'm playing the Sheraton through my AER Compact 60 amp if you want to hear it amplified in a different way. I did make one mistake though. Angelo offered to make me some pickups instead of the bare knuckles, but I said no at the time because I was very happy with how much the clarity had improved. In hindsight, I should probably have taken him up on that offer. His pickups are really good and will probably improve the sound of the guitar quite a bit. The bare knuckles are pretty dark for an instrument that is already quite dark sounding. Of course, they still do the job for the type of sound that I use most of the time, but I have thought about changing them. This was my main guitar until 2012 when I bought the Ibanez, the guitar that you probably know from the YouTube videos. I can stack uh, an E on top of that, and then a G, and then a B. And that became my main guitar that I took on most of the traveling tours in Europe and the one time we went to Canada. So my way of easing into semi-holo guitars was find a cheap but decent model and then try out a lot of different guitars before choosing one that's a good deal and that fits with you replace the wiring and the pickups and have it set up probably. This was not really that expensive. I ended up with a good instrument for less than a thousand dollars and it's nice that you can find an instrument and then along the way decide to upgrade it. I could probably get it to sound even better with some slightly brighter pickups, but it's already very good as an instrument right now, as you can hear. I actually also wore down the frets along the way, so they were replaced as well, but that was mostly just because I was practicing really a lot. And at the time I had to have frets changed or polished at least once a year. But again, Angelo did a fantastic job and the new frets on it are made to last longer. They're not stainless steel, but they are harder than nickel. I'll link to the type of fret wire in the description because they're pretty amazing and play nicer than steel, in my opinion at least. This was a fun process and adventure where I learned a lot about guitars and pickups because I also had to figure out what it was that I wanted and what I was looking for. And for that alone, I think this can be a great project to undertake. The downside to this approach is that it's very time consuming. So you have to have more time than money or really enjoy checking out guitars and figuring out what it is you need and what you want. As far as I can tell, by now even the cheaper instruments are built extremely well and you can get pretty amazing quality for very little money, leaving a lot of room to upgrade things like pickups and tuning picks or the nut or all that stuff. Maybe I have a controversial opinion on this, but to me, 
this option only really is in competition with the more expensive factory-made instruments. To me, that's the biggest difference because you can be really lucky and find a factory-made guitar that's great, but the biggest difference with the price is the pickups and the other stuff, not so much the construction of the guitar, since they're both factory made. Now, most of the time, if you go to a handmade instrument, then you pay a lot more, but you also get an instrument where everything is made to fit together and much more care is taken with the choice of material and really putting it together perfectly. In general, instruments like that are more balanced, they play more consistently, and they're just better. It is in the details, but it is there, and you can tell when you play an instrument made with the attention to detail that people like Richard Harris, Angelo, or Schott Müller, or even a place like Collins. And going to them will give you a great instrument every time, where you have to be a bit more lucky with something that's mass produced. If you want to hear me play a guitar like that, you can check out this demo of uh, Richard's Blue Model. And in the playlist, there's also me playing one of Angelo's guitars, which he actually didn't want to sell to me.